So Node.js has become my go-to way to build backends for my applications. I used to be more of a Python developer, but simply because of the convenience of being able to build my frontend and my backend using the same language, these days I almost exclusively use Node.js. So in this video, for those of you who are also Node.js slash JavaScript developers, we're gonna talk about a very important, albeit slightly boring to some people, topic which is hosting that is how do you get a node.js application hosted on the internet in a way that is easy to set up while also being very very effective high performance secure and everything else that we want because this is where a lot of beginner developers will get stuck you might know how to build an application but you don't know how to host it and actually put it live on the internet and for hosting there's so many different options out there so in this video i'm going to show you the one that i think is the best one for a lot of use cases and that is cloud hosting using cloudway so we'll talk about first of all why this is such a great option and also i will show you a quick tutorial on exactly step by step how to host a node.js application using cloudway so first we need to talk about the basics of hosting so simply put Hosting simply means giving your application a location where it lives on the internet. You can think of a website like a shop where the files inside of your website, like the HTML files, images, all the code for your server, everything like that, are like the products that are on the shelves of the store. Now, if you have a store, in order for someone to visit your store, you need a physical location for the store where all these products are going to be housed. Now, in the world of web and the internet, this is what web hosting gives you in the internet. It gives your website a physical location, which is a server somewhere out there in the world where all of the files for your website are going to be stored. Now what a server is, is it's actually a physical computer that sits somewhere where all of the files for your website or any website is stored. And when a web application is hosted, it gets a unique address, which we call the URL, which allows anyone with a web browser to then visit that website, just like anyone who knows the address to a store can use that address to navigate to the store and visit it. Now this all seems very simple, but making this all happen in a secure and performant way is not an easy task, which is why almost all of us developers use a hosting provider that does all of this heavy lifting for us. So how do you choose a hosting provider? Obviously there's tons of them out there. There's all kinds of different ways to host an application. And I'm not saying this is the right form for everyone, one, different options are going to be right for different situations. But here's kind of a general idea on how to think about this. So first of all, there's a lot of hosting providers that are made mostly for non developers. So they really highlight the fact that there are no code or they allow you to like build a website on their platform or something like that. And then included in that package, they also host that website for you. Now this can be great if you're not a developer and you just want like a drag and drop website builder or something like that. But for us developers, this isn't usually the best choice. So this is the first reason why something like Cloudways really works because it's really tailored to support developer hosting. Now, the second thing to consider is how much technical setup is required to actually get your website live. And a lot of these developer focused platforms will then be super complex to set up, which really takes your time away from developing applications. This becomes more like DevOps work rather than programming work at this point. However, as you will see in a moment, setting up everything with Cloudways is extremely easy and quick. And lastly, of course, we also want a platform that allows our apps to scale as well. So not only do we want it to be easy to set up when you're first creating your application, but if it happens that you get a lot of users, we don't want our servers to crash when it gets a million users. We want something where we don't have to do any extra work to then make it work for a more scalable application with a lot of users. And this is again, another reason why Cloudways works again for a lot of cases, because it's designed to accommodate all the requests for scaling server resources seamlessly by using SSD hosting, as well as an optimized hosting stack and much, much more. And as a fourth bonus thing that we obviously always want is security. And at the same time as providing you this platform that is developer focused, easy to set up and scale Cloudways is also always secure straight off the bat. They protect your account with two-factor authentication. They give you Let's Encrypt free SSL certificates and use dedicated firewalls. They also give 24-7 chat support. They guarantee issue resolution within 
24 hours via email support as well. But for me, when I contacted their live chat, my issue was actually resolved in like five to 10 minutes. Now, Cloudways did sponsor this video because I think they're such a great option that I asked them to partner with me for this video. And luckily they read. So if you do want to try them out, then you can use my link down below in the description where you first will get a free three day trial period where you can test the application for up to four gigabytes before purchasing. And on top of that, if you use my discount code IMC25, you will get $15 in free credits. So check them out from the first link down below in the description. Now let me show you step by step how to host a Node.js application using Cloudway so that just in five to 10 minutes you can have your application live on the internet. So over here I have a test Node.js server, which I have coded. And to get this hosted, what you're gonna do is click that link down below in the description, which is gonna take you to cloudways.com. And this is what you're gonna see. Then what you can do is click right here to try now for free to get that three day free trial. Now I already have an account, so I'm just gonna log into my account. And once I do so, I'm gonna get to my Cloudways dashboard, which looks something like this. Now there's quite a few things going on here, but to get started, what you're gonna do is go over here on the left side panel, click on my projects, and then you're gonna click to add a project over here and just give it whatever name you want to give it. After you have a project, what you're gonna do is go over here on this second top option here and click on my servers, which is gonna take you to this page where you're gonna see any servers you have. And then over here, you're gonna click on add server to create your first server with Cloudways. So over here, select the application type, which is gonna be PHP. So this is very important. Then you're gonna give it a name. We can, for example, call it test app or something like that. And here server name, we can call it test server for testing purposes. And over here, you're gonna select the project that you created in that previous step. And after that, you're gonna see a lot of different settings that you can choose from. For example, you can choose the application stack, which is either a hybrid stack or for a faster setup, you can choose this lightning stack, which is fast and simple NGX setup, but it is not recommended for production. So if you're just testing, you can choose this, but if you wanna build an actual server that you're gonna actually host on the internet, you would probably choose this one in here. And then you can choose your server. So the great thing about Cloudways is that actually behind the scenes, they actually store your server in the cloud and they can do so in a lot of different cloud server providers. For example, you can host it in AWS or Google Cloud or DigitalOcean or whichever one of these options you like the most. Now by hovering over them, you can read more about all the different options and you can do research like which one might make most sense for you, but TLDR, it doesn't matter too much which one you pick here. So I'm just gonna pick DigitalOcean and then you can choose your server type, which is either gonna be basic, general purpose or CPU maximized. And I'm just gonna leave this on default as well. And then location, I'm also gonna leave on default. And then you can click launch now. And it's also gonna show you the price hourly as well as monthly, because obviously it's not free to host something. So you're gonna click launch now over here, which is going to give you this screen where you can see your server. Now it's gonna take a couple of minutes for this to actually get up and running. So once this is over, I'm gonna get back to you and we will continue with the tutorial. So once your server is up and running, you're gonna click on that server and you're gonna get into a screen like this. Now to actually set this up, you're gonna need to click over here to launch SSH terminal. This is gonna essentially allow you to access the actual server where your server is gonna be hosted. And it's gonna give you this command line that's gonna allow you to modify the settings and things like that. So there's a couple of things that we're gonna do here. First of all, it's gonna ask you to log in. So what you're gonna do is on this page over here, you're gonna first copy this username from here. So you're gonna paste that there then enter, then password, which you're gonna copy from here. You're gonna paste that. And once that is done, you're gonna enter and it is gonna give you access to your server. Now, once you LS, which is basically a basic command line command to see what is in this current working directory, you're gonna see two things, applications as well as bin. So first we're gonna CD, so change directory, this is just another terminal command, into applications like that. LS again to see what's there. And we can see that there's one application in here because we only have one application running on the server. And by the way, you can have multiple applications running on the same server as well. So then we're gonna CD into this one in here. 
And in here, we're gonna see a couple of things. And here, the one we're interested in, in is this one, public HTML. So we're gonna CD into this one, public HTML. And once you're here and you LS again, you're gonna see only one file in here, index.php. Now we're not actually creating a PHP application, so we're actually gonna remove this file by going rm index.php. And instead, what we're going to do is create a couple of things. First of all, we're gonna create a file using touch called server.js, which is gonna house our JS server. And then we're gonna create another file called .htaccess. Now, inside of this htaccess file, I'm gonna paste this snippet in here, this exact one. So down below in the description is gonna be a link where all of these snippets and commands and everything like that is going to be listed. So you can just copy paste them. So I'm gonna open this .htaccess file by going nano, for example, if you wanna use that, or you can use Vim or whatever, .htaccess. And now over here, I have pasted what you just saw on the screen right there. And to save this, you're gonna go control O, enter, then control X if you're on Mac. If you go cat.htaccess, we can see that the contents are there. Then what we're gonna do is also open this server file the same way by going nano server.js. And over here, I'm gonna copy now the server that we created before. All right, and now we're gonna do the same thing. Control O, enter, control X, and now our server code file has been saved. Next, we're gonna install the required packages to actually run our Node.js Express server. And we're gonna do that by running this command, npm init-y, which is gonna then go ahead and create for us a package.json file, which has everything that we need, as we can see over there. Then, as you might know, Node.js isn't actually a server framework, it's just a runtime. So to actually run this server, we need to choose which server framework we're gonna actually use to run this server. Now, me and a lot of other people use Express. It's the easiest, most simplest one. So we will also now go ahead and npm install Express to actually run this server. And at this point, we'll just clear this terminal because it's getting a bit cluttered. So once that is done, everything required is going to be installed over here in this server, which by the way, what we're doing here now is we're essentially remote accessing this server. So this server that we are accessing here from this command line is a computer that is running somewhere or well, technically we have like a part of their server and we're essentially remote accessing via Cloudways. That is what we're doing here. Now at this point, when you try to run the server, you might get an error that looks something like this. I'll put it on the screen. If that is the case, you have something called mod proxy not enabled in your server. If that is the case, simply reach out to the Cloudway support from their live chat and tell them that you need mod proxy to be enabled on your server. Within literally a couple of minutes, they're gonna enable it and after that, everything is going to be fine. When I did this, it literally took them like five to 10 minutes to get this all done, which just shows how good their support is. So now that everything is set up, we can try running our server, which we can do by going node server.js, just like that. It looks like there was a typo, so we'll try again and we can see that the server is now running. So that essentially takes care of setting up a Node.js server on Cloudways. The final thing we need to do is to make sure that this server will actually keep running even when this SSH session is not active. And for this, we will use a program called PM2. Now I'll put a list of commands on the screen that you will need to run in here to install PM2, which is essentially just a service that allows the server to keep running in the background, even when we're not actually accessing the server ourselves. I've already done this before, so I'm not gonna run this, but once you run them, PM2 is gonna be installed. And after that, your final step is to use that program by calling PM2, and then use the command start with the name of the file, which is gonna be server.js. And that is gonna put this server live and online right here. Now your question might be, how do I actually access the server from the internet? How do I build a front end that calls the server? Well, what you are gonna do is go back to your Cloudways dashboard and click here on my applications. And then when you click right here in this little icon, it is gonna open the URL of your 
server over here and as we can see it is now working this is exactly what i told my server to return me when i just send a get request to the slash endpoint and now you can take this url from here put it into your front end application as your server url and build your front end to call this server right here so i hope that this tutorial was helpful that is how easy it is to set up a node.js server using cloudways again if you want to try them out you can use my link down in the description get that free trial and then 15 dollars in free credits after you sign up with that if you have any questions let me know down below in the comments thank you for cloudways for sponsoring this video and i will see you in the next video